Welcome to Let's Talk Automotive and our second installment on how tire grip works. Now last week we spoke about car tires and today we'll look at how motorbike tires get their grip and I think this will blow your mind. Now first off, there are some, shall we say, incorrect statements out there about what creates grip on a bike tire, which I'm gonna address now. So two popular misconceptions are that the surface area of the contact patch has no effect on grip and that the more weight we apply, the greater the grip we get. Both these statements are based on Aminton's first and second law of friction and are of course entirely correct if we are talking about friction, but as we discussed last week, there is a difference between friction and traction and this means Aminton's laws are only partially applicable and that there are other significant factors that influence our bike tire's grip. So let's kick off by highlighting that the grip generated by rubber is simply not the same as simple friction because rubber generates friction in three basic ways. Firstly, with adhesion, which is when there is a molecular interaction between the rubber and the tarmac surface. And that is why the greater the surface area, the more adhesion, in other words, grip is available. Now on a molecular scale, both the surface of the tire and the surface of the tarmac are extremely rough. And it's the interlocking of these rough patches that creates grip, which increases as we add more load. And we can demonstrate that with these two business cards, which I've corrugated. So here you can see this is the rough surface of the tire, and this is the rough surface of the tarmac, and these two interlock, which creates that mechanical grip. And we can also see that as we add more load, more interlocking takes place. Although there is a diminishing return though for this added load as eventually these rough patches bottom out which stops any further increase in traction. So there's our diminishing returns in terms of the load that we add to our tires. And secondly we have deformation which is also called mechanical keying. Now this occurs when lateral and vertical loads deform the tire and cause sharp edges in the tarmac to penetrate into the tire, which then cause the rubber and tarmac to key together, which generates more grip. And the third way a tire develops grip is, believe it or not, through wear. When loads are applied to the tire, the resulting forces cause the rubber to tear. And we've all seen the marbles that result from this tearing on the side of the track. Now tearing absorbs energy, which means that the absorbed energy is no longer being applied to the tire, which frees it up to provide more grip. Now so far we've concentrated on the compound of the tire, but what makes a bike tire different to a car tire is its shape and how it deforms due to lean angle. And at this point, I want to revisit a claim made that the size of the contact area has no influence on tire grip, which would mean the size of our tires make no difference. Now while this is clearly not the case, what is interesting is that the contact area produced is more or less the same for both narrow and wider bike tires. So how is it that wider tires produce more grip? Well, the secret lies in the shape of the contact patch, which changes according to the loads of the tire and the lean angle that we apply. So the greater the lean angle, the larger the contact area becomes and is aided by the patch flattening and deforming under load. Amazingly, in order for a bike to turn, there is a serious amount of slip angle that is created. And this is due to the difference in the bend radius between the tire and where we're trying to turn and the cone radius of the tire that is created by the lean angle of the tire. At different lean angles, the tire wants to turn at a tighter radius relative to the radius of the turn or the bend. And this is referred to as camber thrust. And it means the tire is literally sliding through a turn and the greater the lead angle, the more the tire slides. So at 45 degrees, for example, the lean angle of a bike tire will experience about six degrees of slip to maintain a balanced turn and lean angle, which is why when you see the super slow-mos of MotoGP bikes, it looks like they are drifting through the corner, but actually it's the tire experiencing that six degrees of slip angle. 
There is so much more to how bike tire generates grip and I've really, really only scratched the surface here. And as with car tires, we have different tread patterns to cater for different operating conditions, each with their own unique ways of generating grip. But I hope that you get the idea of how bike tires generate grip and how it's different compared to car tires. I know I'm certainly amazed at how complex bike tire grip is and I'm sure you are too. And so that's it for today's episode on how things work and we look forward to catching up with you on next week's episode of Let's Talk Automotive.